What is going on everybody? Hope you are all having a great day. Um, today we're going to go over uh, how the EPA rates vehicles uh, miles per gallon. Now you'd think it'd be pretty um, clear cut but uh, there's a lot of people that still don't know this so I'm going to make a little video on it. I'm not going to make it too long but I just basically googled how does the EPA uh, rate MPG, right? How do they test for it? And there's definitely some flaws. <laughs> um, as you can see here, there's an article from Car and Driver all the way back in 2009. Um, and then everything, I kind of skimmed through that one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can kind of skim as I'm scrolling through here. But they basically um, agree with everything that the other link that I'm going to show you says. I just wanted to show you this here because it also shows a car on a dyno as well as uh, the other company so they don't do the they don't do the test on the road which is already like the number one uh, flaw so we're gonna go to the how stuff works one that's the one I was reading earlier um, so certain vehicles in particular I know a lot of people with a 2019 uh, Ram with the Hemi like myself have not been seeing anywhere near the numbers that the trucks are rated for um, unless you're you know in a climate that's 70, 80 degrees, um, and, you know, you don't have any modifications done to the truck, it's bone stock, and you're cruising down the highway doing 50 miles an hour um, without a headwind, then you might get close to these numbers. But um, I'm going to show you why they're kind of unrealistic. And this applies for all vehicles. I mean, some of them, like a Honda, they're going to get 40 miles to gallon if they claim 40. Same with a Toyota. They you know, four cylinders and stuff like that typically um, match what they're rated for. <clears throat> but here's where the problem is, right? So I'm going to read this to you. City is supposed to replicate uh, urban rush hour driving experience, which, again, right here, there's a picture of vehicle on the dyno, and uh, it says the car or truck is driven 11 miles on the dyno and makes 23 stops over the course of 31 minutes with an average speed of 20 miles an hour and a top speed of 56. All right, so I don't know if this is a load based dyno or not, but if it's not, there's another huge flaw right there because you've got no wind resistance, and a pickup truck is a huge unaerodynamic brick going down the road. So if they're not loading these dynos down, they're not. You know, they're not simulating real-world um, air resistance, you know. So, yeah, I just, so we'll continue here. That's the city. The highway, and I kind of laughed at this one. Now, obviously, you all have to realize that you're not going to get the highway MPGs that your vehicle's rated for when you're cruising down the road at 70, 80 miles an hour. Those are interstate speeds, okay? Most highways are 45 to 65 miles an hour, which is typically where your average vehicle gets its best fuel economy. Um, so the highway portion, again, on the dyno, is supposed to mimic rural and interstate free... <clears throat> See, this says interstate freeway driving, but that's not the right terminology. <clears throat> they use the engine warmed up, makes no stops, uh, and the vehicle is driven on the dyno 10 miles over a period of 12 and a half minutes, with an average speed of 48 and a top speed of 60. They never even hit 61 miles an hour, 70, 80. So <laughs> between 48 miles an hour and 60, like I was saying, between 45 and 65 basically, is your prime MPGs. So when you get a half ton truck that says they're rated at 20 miles to the gallon highway, that's between 48 and 60 miles an hour. And that's without a headwind and bone stock, no modifications, no big heavy tires, no lifts, no leveling kits, um, which is understandable. I don't expect them to make a claim on mileage and then still own up to that after all those modifications have been done. Um, but it's just kind of unfair. Like people, it needs to be real world. You know what I mean? Most people are on the interstate uh, daily. So, and that's, and that's where a lot of miles get racked up. 
therefore you're going to be putting a lot of gas through your vehicle. So they should start rating them. I'm fine with a highway rating, but they should also have an interstate rating. Is I guess what I'm getting at. So here you can see on Edmunds.com, um, they where to go? Yeah, city versus highway. So they basically assume that uh, we drive 55% of the time in the city and 45% of the time on the highway. Um, so right there, if you do more highway, you're gonna probably see the same or higher numbers. That your vehicle is rated for and if you do more city you're going to get worse mileage than what it's rated for um, obviously the city mpg and the highway mpg um, you combine those numbers and you get your uh, average right, so this example here is 26 combined city highway 22 city 32 highway um, and again you know this is 48 to 60 miles an hour and this would be their test which was what was it 11 miles or whatever with x amount of stops um, top speed of 50 something so definitely use websites like fuely.com do some research make sure you look up real world numbers um, before here it goes into hybrid testing make sure you get real world numbers before you just purchase a vehicle if if you're looking to purchase a vehicle because you want good mpg and that's a very important thing to you don't just dive in do the research make sure it actually gets what they claim um make sure owners are reporting that hand calculated not going off the trip computer because those can be off by quite a bit depending on manufacturer um, but yeah, so I just wanted to kind of enlighten everybody on how it's rated, what the terms mean, and more or less what to expect. Uh -huh. And it all depends on weather, too. Um, obviously, a headwind is going to take more power and, and use more gas, as where a tailwind is going to help you out. Um, and, and the warmth, too. Right here, right now, um, you know, it's March 8th, and it's 15 degrees here in Minnesota. We've got some snow on the ground still. The colder air temps with the uh, restriction, the extra rolling resistance from the snow. I have slightly bigger than stock uh, Goodyear Wrangler Dirt Track tires. Those are slightly heavier than stock. So they're, they all play factors. And with it being cold, I warm the truck up 15 minutes before I go anywhere. I'm only averaging like 9 to 11 miles per gallon right now. And I have a 10 mile commute each way to work and about eight miles of that is highway interstate i should say um 65 to 70 miles an hour so it can obviously vary and there's a lot of factors so just want everyone to know what all goes into this and i hope uh, i shed some insight on this and help people understand a little bit better uh, if you like this video make sure you hit that like button subscribe for more videos like this and make sure to check me out on facebook at tony the truck guy thanks for watching